Okay, let's get back into the the meat of the subject of the tutorial. And that's dimensional constraints. And this is the be all and end all of dimension driven design. This is the dimensional part. This is when we start to see some power. Let's set up a, a test subject. I'll sketch out a line, add a constraint to convert it to a construction, and give it this one a directional constraint. I'll add two points, make those, constrain those as points on. I'm going to fix one of the points. And now you can see this solution is fairly well defined, all except for this point over here, which is still yellow. There's three ways to add dimensional constraints. I'm going to so I'm going to make three copies of this. through the three different methods. The first method, let's add some text here, the first method is add a variable while placing the dimension. Second method is to convert a dimension to a constraint. And the third method is to assign a variable to a dimension. OK, so. They might make much sense yet, but um, as I do them, they will. I'm just going to drop that text actually and spread it. Now, so the first method is to add a variable while placing the dimension. So, what I'm going to do is place a dimension between the two points to define the distance along the line, and that should make that last point well defined. So, let's select our dimension linear tool. I want the alignment to be true. I'm going to tentative click on the point. I'm not going to use AccuSnap here because AccuSnap doesn't always pick up the points. It finds it quite hard to pick up points, so I'm going to use tentative snap instead. And now, as I go to place the second point, and before I actually finally place a dimension, you may have noticed that in the dimension toolbox here, a new area has popped up that you may not have seen before, which has constraint and it has a check mark and it has a, a field here. This will this area will appear when you start adding dimensions to a solution that has some constraints applied. So what it's asking us here is if we want to add a constraint to this dimension. And then it asks us if so, what name would you like to give it? So let's put in distance one. And then we have to hit return to populate this box below. And I would recommend always giving names to constraints. You don't necessarily have to. It will still work if you leave the check spot checkbox on and if the field empty, but I would recommend always giving dimensions uh, um, a meaningful name. Although, of course, distance 1 isn't too meaningful, but... Okay, so what we see happen here now, some text has been added to our file, and the point has become well-defined. It's turned into white. Let's just show what's happening here. This here is now a variable that drives this dimension, as in dimension-driven design. Let's modify and resolve and we can now select this text uh, as we drag the mouse up and down you can see the solution is solving and moving the point equal to the distance 
that's read out in our variable. There's another way to edit this value. If we go back up to our toolbox, we get and use modify constraint. The last icon on the palette is modify value. We get this new to um, dialog box up here which asks us for a parameter. So we select that parameter there and accept and it changes to read distance 1 and now we can type into the box what distance we would like. So let's type in 30 and return and you can see instantly the solution resolving automatically for us. So that's the first method. That's adding a variable while placing a dimension. So as we place the dimension we were asked if we wanted to make a constraint on that dimension. We gave it a name, populated the box below, and the rest was taken care of as we placed the dimension.